Hello, good morning, Leah. Good morning, Allison. How are you? Oh, you know, I'm all right. I'm tired. I think I think it's allergy stuff. For me, like, yeah, I get like stuffy and congestion and I get a headache, but a lot of times allergies just kind of make me feel tired and like down, like tired and like low energy in a way that makes me feel like, oh, everything is so hard. And that's how I feel yeah. today. I, I I very much am feeling you on the allergy front. I do, you know, one in, one allergy medicine in the evening, one in the morning, and hope that that gets me through the day. Yeah. This is the hardest season for me. Spring, yeah. you know, in the fall, early fall, I also get really bad, too. But for me, yeah. it seems like June is the worst and so we're getting to the end of may and so i think it's kind of also it starts to get hot out which this week started yeah. to be warm which kind of also saps my my strength across the board <laughs> like, oh, i actually i posted this on facebook so you may have seen it but um i did this children's book i was pro cataloging this children's book about something called estivation and it was like is it hibernation no it's estivation which is where animals and plants um, like do a sort of hibernation, a torpor in the summertime because it's too hot and their bodies can't function well when it's hot. And granted, many of the animals discussed were like snails and fish and things that are more like reptilian or like they have a harder time controlling their body temperature because they're not mammals. Good morning. But good morning. But there was also an African hedgehog on the list that was very cute. And apparently th they can also for like six weeks at a time or so, just, it's just too hot. And so I realized that that's just me. It's not, I'm not grumpy and I'm not, you know, I don't, I just, it's biological. It's too hot for me to function. So I close right. the blinds and I lay on my couch and I watch TV or I read a book and that's how I get through the summer. <laughs> But I'm starting to kind of feel like this week has gotten so much warmer and it kind of, it really does make me feel like, oh, it feels like it takes more energy to do things when, when it gets warm out. And I just don't feel that way in the winter time, the way a lot right. of people do. Right. Yeah. I, I feel that way in the winter time. Like I want to snuggle up and hibernate. Yes. But yeah. I, I can see where. Yeah. It's just like a lot. Do that in the summer, so. And like, I don't have an appetite because it's like so warm oh, out yeah. and stuff, but I also want to continue to eat. <laughs> I have the appetite or I don't have the appetite, but I have all the food still. So, right. um, but I don't feel like going outside because it's just so human. <laughs> so anyway, um, sorry to a downer. It's, summer hasn't even officially begun yet, but I feel like this week has begun to usher it in and I'm beginning to feel it. I'm beginning to uh, know I'm going to shut down soon. Memorial Day weekend is usually very hot and I'm usually like, this is this is the time. Let's close up the windows, close up the doors. Here, air conditioning from here on out, right? Yes. Fill in for my long summer's nap. Good morning, everybody. Also, Chris says that Flonase uh, is a great friend for allergies. And I also yes. do use that too, for sure. Especially, yeah, for the runny nose and congestion part. I have not found a good thing to make me less, less tired. Yeah. Um, even, even out, I mean, I know some allergy medication can make you drowsy and that's not what I'm taking. It just, I can't seem to get the stamina back. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I'm feeling you yeah, same, same way. Yeah. I'm the very same way, yeah. but we'll get through it. We'll I, get know. Through it. I know. I know. Yeah. And that's part of why I do or why I like my garden so much is because the garden, it wants weather like this. So even though I'm like struggling outside, hopefully <laughs> uh, things are being like, yes, this is great. I'm growing. This makes me so happy, you know, and I can at least like know my tomatoes are. <laughs> <laughs> my uh, salvia plants are doing wonderful. I haven't done a thing to them. I haven't cleared the, the leaves out of the the flower bed from the fall that got stuck there, but they are doing wonderful. And the plant that last year I was like, this one is just, it's dead. It, it didn't take. It's doing wonderfully this year. I'm so and happy for you. Know. Decided. Yeah. Gathered its energy all winter and it's doing beautiful now. So I've got I'm glad to in front of my house along with weeds. Yeah. I'm, 
I'm glad to hear that. And actually, my I planted a salvia last year, and it was fine last year. It, but this year, it is so big. So I wonder yeah. if conditions have been good this spring or something like the exact balance of rain and temperature or something, because mine is also very impressive. <laughs> yeah, mine look great. I'm gonna have to gonna have to spend some time this weekend, I think. <laughs> Yeah, making the, making the lawn look a little bit better to show them off. Because right, right. Beautiful. Well, and that's I another. Go ahead. I love beautiful flowers, just especially purple. Mm -hmm. I love purple flowers. <laughs> they're really like striking. They really catch your eye because they're so I don't know vibrant. And yeah, when you have something like that that looks nice in your yard, that's like more encouragement, like you said, to yeah. keep up with other stuff because you have something growing and you want it to like look good. <laughs> I want to show it off. I want it. To, I want right. it to be able to show itself off. That's what exactly. Because I, yeah. <laughs> I had nothing to do with it. Well, I know. I know. That's one of the cool things about gardening too. Is I mean, yeah, you got to try to take care of the stuff. You got to put it in. Make sure it's in the conditions it needs. And you know, you do need to care for it in some regard, depending on more or less, depending on the type of plant. But then it just does its thing. That's what it was made to do, which is bloom yeah. beautifully. So it, it does it. I don't have to worry about it. Yeah, it just takes care of itself. So anyway, long, long way around. I'm fine today. How are you? <laughs> Glad we finally got there. Yeah. <laughs> oh well. <laughs> It's just going to be one of those days. But well, yeah, yesterday was a little bit of one of those days too. Um, this is, I no one needs to know this, but I was sitting at my desk drinking coffee. Well, that's what I do. I do my work and I drink coffee. Um, and I don't know what happened. It's like I forgot how to consume a beverage for a moment. All you got to do is pour it in your mouth, close your lips and swallow. And I must have done something in the wrong order because it just all went down onto my desk. And I was like, what, where did this, you know, and uh, I was like, so this is, this is how it's going to be today then, huh? Because that was like early on. And yes, I almost spilled beverages so many times. And I try to be very careful because I do, ha I have library materials in there. So I try not to ever be doing it over things, right. but, um, and I didn't, you know, it was fine, but I'm um, to try not to ruin my keyboard. Um, but we got <laughs> to have our coffee. <laughs> right. No, and even though I take travel mugs to work, I hate drinking out of the travel mug, so I will take the top off Why? and then spill it. Yes. Yes. Who do I? I spill I hate yes. drinking the plastic lid. Like, I, there's just something about that that's wrong. I don't yes. like it. I, I have a good off. Great mug, take, unscrew the lid, and then I drink out of it like it's a, yeah. like a regular cup, and yeah. then that is how things get spilled. And then also that's how, because I take the lid off, that's how there's always a coffee ring. From the okay. lid. But <laughs> Do you know how many tissues I go through a week just putting them down to put my lid on so that they yes, can? Yes, I know. I know. I have coasters that I sometimes use. I have paper towels. Sometimes sometimes a piece of paper I'm no longer using anymore. <laughs> so, yeah. uh, and it's not, it's not unusual for some. I try to keep things I need nice, of course, but it's not unusual for like a note in my office to have a coffee ring on it. But I feel like that's just. That's, that's just. Then you know it's a genuine note from Allison, and you'll treasure it that much more. <laughs> right. And yeah. I think uh, to not to call her out on here, but my predecessor in my job, Samantha, I think that was also a calling card from her as well because uh, having like coffee rings and stains on things. Um, because every now and then I would go through my old like I'd go through her stuff like old notes and everything. Yeah. Like, How do I do this? And there'd be like little bits of you know coffee coffee ring. And so I just I feel like it's. It's part of the job. <laughs> um, Melanie says she's tried to eat and drink with her mask on many times. Yeah. I have done that as well. Um, yeah. The other day, I tried to drink something ridiculous. It was, I grabbed the wrong, I had like my drink and something else sitting on the, it was ketchup. I tripped up the bottle of ketchup and I was like, this is not my no. <laughs> no. drink. So. Oh my gosh. Well, yeah, Audrey, pointed out that, Audrey pointed out that like there was also I have to breathe involved in my drinking. So not only yeah. do I have to put the liquid in my mouth, close close my lips and swallow. I also had to breathe in there and I had to have, you know lift off the mask. So that's like five things. It's I mean, very tricky. It is. You know? And it's something you do without thinking. So it's very easy to mess it up because you're not right. thinking afterward. 
So especially when it's been that kind of a week and that has been that kind of a week. Yeah. <laughs> I have to say, I like I like your shirt. I can't see it very well yeah, today. This is my uh, summer reading, summer reading t-shirt. It's uh this turtle with a rabbit both reading books. Turtle has eyeglasses. A, a whale with a book. Oh, that's right. Because yes. Tales and Tales. Tales and Tales is our summer reading theme this year. All about animals. So that's going to be very exciting. Animals just are so easy to get excited about. Mm -hmm. So it just makes that the summer reading thing that much more exciting, I think. Unlike that year when the theme was sports. Yeah. Like, I'm like, La Sport, Ball, Throw, Cat, whatever. I don't know. Right, right, right. Yeah. <laughs> and <clears throat> so, yes, everyone can love animals. So it's, it's, I'm looking forward to summer reading this year. It's going to be very different from last year, but very different from previous years. Um, we're still we're still having story time for all ages, and um, <clears throat> there are going to be opportunities to to do things. But it's not going to be the same as years past, um, just because. You know, with, with the state of things, the way they are with the pandemic, it's not quite safe to get back to normal yet. Um, we, we will be doing story times at all the locations, but outside, <clears throat> you have got a wonderful place to do them. They're at Northwest with your garden and your gazebo. John yeah. Branch has a gazebo also. And the other branches have some outside space where they can have story time. At Maine, <laughs> there is no outside space that's conducive to story time. So what we're going to do is uh, once a week on Mondays, weather permitting, of course, um, <clears throat> we're going to have story time at Rising Park. We got permission to, to have our story times there. So we'll be doing them there um, at, at Rising Park. And those story times are six for ages six and under. Um, they're also, they're, we'll be doing, um, Zoom story times for ages six and under. And if you, you need to call and register for those so they can, um, or you can sign up for them online. Yeah. But you need to link. The link to the Zoom program and give you the password to get in because <clears throat> they don't want to just make it avail available out there everywhere. Just because, you know, so no one's goofing around and does anything silly. Mm. We're also going to be doing some um, programs for kids ages 6 to 12 on Zoom. Um, they're going to be doing, and Facebook, and um, no, not on Zoom, on Facebook. They're going to be doing those ones on Facebook for ages 6 to 12, different kind of programs. And... Audrey will fill you in on the details. Read Audrey's comments. She'll definitely give us any and correct us if we say something wrong. Please, yeah. Audrey. And we're going to be doing like art projects. You can get pick up the grab bag with the art supplies at the branch and then um, tune in on Facebook or check out the video on YouTube to, to do the craft together. Mm -hmm. um, so that'll be, that'll be fun. And the kids are having a pet show and tell on Zoom on June 2nd and on June 5th. Oh. So one of those two days they get to sign up for it. That's for 12 and under. Um, you can get on there and show off your pet on Zoom. Um, my pet right now, I believe is hiding under my chair. He does not- You have shown there. off your pet on our show before. <laughs> yeah, he showed up last week. But he does not usually like when I do the, the computer talking thing. I don't know <laughs> the computer talking thing. This isn't Zoom, but it's like right, that. Right. He does not like it. I don't. I don't know if it sounds funny to him or something. Um, he showed up last week, but I'm pretty sure that's because he needed to go to the bathroom. He's <laughs> trying to get my attention. <laughs> but um, <clears throat> but yeah. So there are going to be lots of opportunities to do things um, for teens. We're going to have some um, like craft grab bags throughout the summer that they can grab and take and we'll have um some of them will just include instructions some of them i think are going to have some videos that we post it's going to be different for different items um i know we're going to have a plant swap we're going to do that at the northwest branch because you've got a great outside space we're doing that on thursday june 10th 
Um, and we're going to be doing a birding 101 type Zoom program for adults as well, teens and adults, anyone who's interested in birding, we've got kids who are interested in birding, we can yeah. do that. We're going to be doing that on via Zoom. So we've got lots of programs planned for the summer. It's just, it's not going to be like years past. We're not going to have big programs on the third floor with everyone crowded in. It's just yeah. we're not there yet. It's not, yeah. you know, it's not safe yet. So yeah. we're going to play it safe and do story, do programs like we have been doing mainly with the online stuff, but with a little bit of outside safe stuff thrown in as well. Yeah. So, and then even if things, I'm oh, sorry, go ahead. I was just say slowly getting back to in-person type experiences. Yeah. And even as things change, things will likely be different in July than they are yeah. now, but programs take a lot of planning and advertisement as well to let people yes. know they're happening. Even if we could throw something together in a week, which actually you all are talented enough. I'm sure you could, um, you need enough time to advertise it and yeah. all that kind of thing. So when we're doing planning programs, we do it kind of like a quarter at a time and like summer, summer reading is a programming time. So even if things have changed, we can't just suddenly throw something on because it's just it's just yeah. not enough time. So hopefully we got to like plan a few months in advance and yeah. a few months at a time. Yeah. So yeah, we were we started talking about summer reading probably in January is when yes. we started about summer reading. Yeah. And I feel January, like when winter, reading, when winter reading actually begins, then yeah. you talk about summer reading. Yes. Yeah. So it's <laughs> it's it's very much. We're, we don't know what we're planning for, what it's going to be like when we're planning, especially um, right now during, you know, the whole last year has been crazy. Um, I do want to say um, last year we had an app that people could sign up, you know, log their reading. Um, we didn't like that app real well. So we were trying a new app this year. It's called Read Squared. So people will um, have a new app. And if you're one of those people who doesn't like logging your time um, or your titles um, on an app because maybe your phone doesn't have enough memory for you to download one more app. Um, we, we will also be doing paper logs as well. So great. I like, the, I like the paper log for whatever reason. I just I do too. prefer it. Yes. Um, yes. And so to kind of Okay, I'm sorry. When do, before I move on to something else, what um what day does summer reading begin? Remind me. June first. June first. Nice. And yeah. so that and it's June. Is it all the? Is it the month of June and the month of July? Basically, there's yes, two months. Month of July. Okay. Month of July. Um, everything's got to be like your log, your reading log, and everything has to be turned in at sometime in August. I think August thirteenth, fourteenth, somewhere in there. So you've got some more time to turn turn things in, but. Most of the programs are going to be, I think right. all of the programs are going to be June and July. And for the reading log, you're entered and in into a drawing. Is this correct? Yes. This the is the most important to me. Is yeah. uh, as a, like, if I, were, I get out of it, you get to enjoy like, reading, Allison. That's and I do, but <laughs> um, <clears throat> there are gift card prizes that we're giving away this year. Okay. Because again, you know, touching stuff. It's just we. Like I said, we were planning, we started planning this in um, in January. So making decisions on what things were like in January, we decided, yeah, yes. <laughs> and well, like, you know, I guess, sorry, I was just gonna say, I guess I could go one year without another FCDL keychain thing, but probably not two. So there better be more of those okay. things to you. <laughs> You need another pen that says FCDL library. Another pen. I love the pens. Um, you know, stickers, yeah. magnets. Uh, did we get a did we get a jar opener one time? Yeah, jar opener. Yeah, a jar opener. I I'm I'm here for the for the prizes. Kids do get um a free book that they get to keep. So they're they're, and I'm they're not, okay. I know I'm like sounding flippant, but I am here for the prizes. And that was going to help me transition into somebody else who's here for the prizes. I actually, for, can you, I forget his full name. Andrew Yang. Really? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and he is a person who began signing up for online summer reading programs um, many years ago. Once mm -hmm. things kind of like 
I want to say probably some of the first times when you were able to sign up online for this, because it has been, I think, like 10 years or something. Yeah. Um, and he accidentally signed up for the wrong summer reading program and online. And then he got to the end and he was like, oh, shoot, I live in wherever and this is in a different state. Could you mail me my prizes? This is the summer reading program I did. He's a teenager. And they're like, sure, and mailed it to him. And so then every year he's tried to sign up for more and more summer reading programs across the country to collect that library swag. And that was my point, yeah. which is I totally get it. I want to collect the library swag from I, all I, I, I love the library swag. And I love when vendors give me swag. I mean I'm not <laughs> swag. Well, glasses pen. or a pen. Yeah. It's it's like, wow, this is awesome. So yeah. I totally get it, get it, mm -hmm. him wanting the library swag. He his name shows up frequently in like some of the librarian listservs I I'm, I'm on where they talk about like programming ideas and people share ideas and tips and tricks and yeah. you know, people will be like, I've been named. Oh my god. <laughs> which is their way of saying that Andrew Yang has signed up for their summer reading program. Oh my gosh. A lot of these programs being online, you can sign up. It's just a matter of the prizes, what happens then. Um, he did mail us years ago and try to sign up for our program, but we responded and said, sorry, budget constraints. We can't mail prizes. You have to pick them up in person. So, um, he has attempted to join the Fairfield County Summer Reading Program. He's been um, <laughs> But yes, it's, it's he's been doing it now for, like you said, about 10 years. Yeah, so he's an adult, a full adult now. But yes. I, Although I, he still says that for teen summer reading programs. Which is, yeah, that starts to get a little... Yeah. yeah. But he also sells t-shirts about... Like, I think he sells, I don't think it's the You've Been Yang, but, um, but he sells t-shirts about it and he's promoting summer reading himself, you know, right. so, so that's, he's that's doing great. It's all in the libraries as well. And it right. it's all in good fun. fun. It's all yeah. in good fun and it's for, yeah, it brings attention to summer reading programs, which are great for everybody. It's great to use those extra daylight hours to get a little bit of reading in. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I can totally get it. And if I were, if online sign up were a thing when I was a kid, I can totally see like trying to sign up for like summer reading program in New York City. And then, like, what if I got like a New York Public Library coaster or something? I can provide myself. So, yeah, you know. yeah, that would be that would be pretty awesome. Yeah. Why didn't we think of that when we were kids? Well, there wasn't online. There wasn't. Option. So you would have had to like write to them, which would have been different. I mean. When I was a kid, we didn't even get like little trinkets along the way. Like we we got stickers and there was like this mural wall. Mm -hmm. And like some people would like create. There was like a picture that we were supposed to be creating. And like you could put your stickers in. Um, but some people would do like stuff on the side and they'd like start a flower and other people would help finish the flower. It was, it was, it was cute, but we've got, yeah, to, we got to add to the wall. Okay. I don't remember. I'm from Lancaster and I don't remember exactly what the prize circumstances were for our summer reading program at that time. But I do remember the little pamphlet and I remember there being 15 minute, at least the one year having to mark down like 15 minute increments that I had read. And mm -hmm. I remember being at my grandma's house visiting and uh, having my little thing out and like writing it. And I feel like maybe there was one year where I colored like a pie chart or something like that. And I remember like marking that down. I was in there, you know, but I mean, I read so much anyway, I would fill that log out like, so soon. Um, but you know, then I think a lot of times you had to wait to, I don't know, to certain times or whatever, but um, I don't know. It was always just so much, so much fun to like, prove to someone how much you'd read and have them be excited for you. Right. And then you're like, can I get away with, I need like one more 15 minute increment to get this prize. I promise I'll read it, but maybe I want the prize today. I never did that, man. I never did that. Um, I think I was a very honest reporter of my reading. I, I would sometimes be like, well, I hated reading when I was little. I'd be right. like, ah, 
will you just read it to me? And that counts. That does, you right. You read it yourself. Hearing, right. it, hearing a book read counts. Yeah, that's so fine. I, I don't think I ever lied about mm -hmm. finishing the books, but yeah. maybe they were read to me rather than I read them. That makes sense. And I mean, I was the type who the whole afternoon was spent in my room reading, so I probably had that log done <laughs> the first day, but that's just, you know. And yeah. Audrey, this is shocking and disturbing to me. Audrey's mom never let her do summer reading because she said reading was its own prize and she didn't need it. That's sad. Yeah, I'm sorry, Audrey. And here you are, you you know, working so deeply in summer reading and promoting it so hard and you're, you know, you're making up for little Audrey <laughs> what she didn't have. <laughs> Yes, but there are going to be lots of opportunities to join summer, lots of things to do for summer reading. So check out our website. It's all there. Please um, do. All the youth stuff is in Audrey's comments, but if you don't feel like reading it there, <laughs> come to our website and you can see the programs we have planned. And then you can register too. Yes. Yeah, because like you, like I said, we need to email that that Zoom link to you. Yeah. Um, and oh, Audrey clarified that they did live like way out of town, so making extra trips into town to pick up a summer reading prize maybe was out of the, you know, <laughs> yeah. maybe that's part of it. That's maybe, yeah, probably. <laughs> we were talking about like how we did summer reading when we were little. Do you have, and of course it was summertime. So I read all the time as a kid mm -hmm. in summer as I was out of school. Now I continue to work in the summer. So I'm not sure my reading habits change a ton in the summertime. What about you? There is one thing different that I do in the summertime like growing up it was always summertime was that free time so like I read a bajillion books in the summer I would mm -hmm. stay up all night to finish a book I would mm -hmm. you know I just I my reading was crazy and like yeah. I would get my days and nights off all out of a whack because I would just stay up reading really late sure um but the thing I do now that is different is I will have a pool book. Um, oh, okay. That is the book that I will take with me to the to the pool because yes. usually um, a couple times a summer I will have my nephews and um, we will I'll, I'll take them to the pool. Yeah, and we'll spend a couple afternoons there, and every once in a while I'll go by myself, and I'll that's my book mm -hmm. that I will it will last me like all summer, and I will yeah. read it only at the pool. Yes. And then if it gets to be the end of summer and I haven't finished the book yet, it then becomes my bubble bath book. <laughs> and I read it in the bubble bath because it's it's like you have to have this book is okay to read near water. So right. it has to be like a paperback book that is older that probably I've already read once and is okay. um but maybe not. Not necessarily. Yeah. It has to be one that's like it's Cheap, and if it falls into the water and becomes like an accordion, it, it yes. doesn't matter. I can throw it away when I'm finished with it because it's got the yes. pretty water stained pages. So, right. yes, I I now will have a pool book. That's good. <laughs> That's great time. to know. Um, and I just uh, since we are here on here representing the library, I noticed you're not taking your library book to the pool. I am not now. I it's would always have to go. It may be something that I bought from the friends. <laughs> there you go. I would I would encourage people taking their library books to the pool to just be careful. Just be careful. And I would really say if you're gonna take it to the beach. I would encourage you to not take it to the beach at all. Yes. Maybe you know what? the balcony of your hotel or yes. whatever, that's fine. But to the physical beach where there's the sand, I just you would not believe how much sand gets in the book covers. Yes. I, every year we have to like take the cover off the book and throw that cover away and replace the cover because it's just, there's so much sand in the book. And sometimes I'm really surprised at what people choose to read at the beach. <laughs> because like for me, I want light fluffy romances. That's my beach read. Sure. I've had like books on economics, like, understanding like the way finances work and like the financial crisis of 2008 and like like you took this this was your retreat <laughs> like, 
this brought you comfort and like this is how you relax reading about the economic right. crisis and how to work our way out of it like that's that is funny. not a beach read so that's i'm funny and to clarify surprised you know it's a beach read because it's filled with sand yes yeah yeah there's no doubt where the book right. was at right. all but the pieces yeah. are warped from humidity and damp they're all they're all wrinkled and wavy and then the cover the jacket's filled with sand <laughs> And guys, this happens all summer long, many to many, many blocks. And not just in the summer, too, because you'll get those people who go, will go on trips in the winter and they'll bring back <laughs> their boots. True. True. And, and then we'll not only had so much less of that this year, this last year. Yeah. I don't think I've gotten a book with sand in it since 2019, honestly. Yeah. In tech services, I don't think we've received one. But I was going to say, if when we get one in the wintertime, not only then are we like, you know, having to do the work of change the jacket, but then we're also jealous because this jealous. person yeah. was just done. <laughs> they got to go to the beach. I wonder which beach they were at. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So we get very jealous when you bring back Sandy books. <laughs> right. Yeah. So anyway, I'm glad you're taking a paper back to the pool that uh, yes. you won't have to worry about damaging. <laughs> so it's typically like a romance or something light and fluffy then. Oh, yeah. Oh, just found a Sandy book yesterday. <laughs> Tommy's telling us. Well, I guess it's begun, which is great it's because begun. it means people are enjoying themselves and traveling again. Just, you yeah. know, keep us in mind. <laughs> Be careful. Mm -hmm. Speaking of the pool, that reminded me because yeah. it was over there on the, the, over there by where the pool is. Did you hear the story about the Lancaster Fire Department rescuing the ducks from the storm drain? No. Two weeks ago, there were ducklings that fell in the storm drain over, over there, and the Lancaster Fire Department came in and they rescued them, and they got the ducklings out. No, I did not know that. That's adorable. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah, it was earlier this month. Like, I think a woman heard them, heard them, <laughs> so, or I think... Or did she see them? I read the article, but it was a couple weeks ago. I don't remember. Oh my gosh. And Audrey was driving home when it, that happened. Oh. Did you see the ducks go in or did you see the ducks get rescued? I feel like those would be two very different drives. I hope you got to see them getting rescued. Well, if she was driving home, I must have read where it happened wrong. Oh, well, it doesn't matter. It happened in Lancaster and the Lancaster Fire Department rescued the ducks. Great. Um, she says she didn't remember anything, but that's fine. They were clearly in very capable hands. Right? You know, yeah, tell tell us, give us more information. Um. Well, but if there were even pictures of like the firefighters down in the storm drain getting them out. That is just so sweet. I love, I love it happened or it happened again this week. Oh, this one happened like two weeks ago. Um, so maybe it happened again. Wow. I hear those stories all the time about people rescuing the ducklings because yeah that's just and you know how i am about ducks i love oh, ducks. I so i follow I duck news um right. oh this um by the kroger this wasn't by the kroger so happened again oh, <laughs> wonderful what happened yes. i remember um one year there was a duck that had laid eggs and hatch the eggs on the lawn of the White House, like like under like one of the bushes, and like the Secret Service would like make sure they made it back safe when they were going Aww. to whatever water they were going to. But I remember, um, yeah, the ducks. They would let the ducks come back on the on the oh White House. Right That's now. so cute. Audrey said the police were arriving when she was driving past. Oh my gosh. Oh wow. Well. I know there were some geese making a scene in that general area, but more by McDonald's on Memorial. Um, they were like all near that. Everyone had kept having to slow down because the geese were like thinking about going across the road, but not doing it. And there weren't any babies though. These were just grown geese, but they were definitely holding the traffic. Oh, I love those stories. And I, you see stories of like other areas, I am a big fan and I follow all the animal pages pages on Instagram. Like, you know, just the lions laying in the middle of the road and <laughs> the jeeps like they can't get through because you're not going to upset the lion. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, for our viewers here who were here the week when you talked about Long Boy, that very tall duck, yes. 
Um, I did follow him on Instagram. And then the rabbit that was stolen, that was like the world's largest rabbit. Mm -hmm. I did some Googling of that and did get to see some pictures of him on his own. I did not want to see, I knew there was going to be a picture of a child holding him and he was going to be bigger than the child. And I didn't want to see that because that for some reason is really disturbing to me. And so I, I, I didn't see any of that, but I did get to see, he is a big rabbit. He's very pretty. And he's a certain type of rabbit that is meant to get really big. He's still like a okay. foot longer or foot and a half longer or something than those rabbits are supposed to be, which is a lot, but he is not, it, he is already supposed to be a very large, like two and a half foot long rabbit, but he's like four feet okay. long. So um, anyway, I did look that up and they do believe that he was stolen. And last I checked, he'd not been returned. So That's sad. I know. Did you hear the story about um, it's a woman in California, the California condor, it, it's like critically endangered, mm -hmm. like critically endangered species. And then you've done like some kind of program to help bring them back. And, mm -hmm. um, but like 20 of them descended on this woman's house and like stayed there and were, they were like wrecking her house, like, you know, taking over like the, the yard and like, Pecking at the side of her house. Oh my gosh! But she can't like hurt them or do anything because they're yeah. critically endangered. Oh, the, no. the wildlife people are like clap at them, and you know you can maybe spray them with water. You know, yelling at them and right doesn't get them to leave. But your house is on what was formerly their breeding area, so you just gotta put up with it. <laughs> but like. 20% of the still of the population of the California condors were all at her house. They like oh had a house God. party through <laughs> just descended oh on her house. And we're like, we're here. We're going to make a mess. So what I, I, cause what is the solution to that? And I just can picture myself being told to clap at them. I can see it now. I can see it at my own home and me being like, what? <laughs> And like right. looking around and I'm picturing it being like the birds and just, I can't do that. And, right. and why did the, why was this not revealed to her when she purchased this home? I feel very bad for her. I feel, well, I, I think feel their numbers were so well. low for so long that it, but now that they're starting to come back a little, but I think they're only like 160 total ever. Uh, but there, she had like 30 at her house. <laughs> So can we drop a big net over her house and then somehow like pull them all up in the net? I know they have wings, so they'll just fly back. But could you relocate? Could you humanely relocate? <laughs> that just sounds horrible because I have, I have some bird feeders um, and, you know, I feed all, all birds. And anyone who's a bird feeder knows that starlings will come in and they will just like they've got these long beaks and they'll just they'll eat so much and they're kind of bullies about it, but other birds get it too. It seems to be worth it. But the, I have this feeder in the backyard and they will decimate it really quickly. And then I'll come home from work. I came home from work the other day and it was empty and I could just hear them screaming at me in the tree. And I'm sure it was unrelated to me. I'm sure it had, they were not actually yelling at me, but I could just hear them in the trees shrieking. And I don't know, it felt a little bit like the birds. And so I can kind of relate not really, but to that woman with the condors. And I think for me, Leah's frozen. I don't know for anybody else. I'm assuming it's her that's frozen. You're welcome to tell me in the comments, but we are at the end of our show. So I feel like I can go ahead and close this down if she doesn't come back. We will be here next week. We do not have a topic set for next week yet. So feel free if there's anything in the comments you wanna touch on or talk about, send us a note. Um, and then the week after that will be our uh, anniversary week. So uh, we'll be celebrating our one year anniversary of doing the show. And we'll see if we can have anything special planned for that. We'll find out. Uh, but thanks for being here with us this morning. And we will see you next time.